and then back over to uh, uh, yeah i'd like to thank uh, can you hear me yeah oh yes yeah, i'd like to thank uh Stani for bringing this uh this issue forward um i've been hearing a lot of complaints from not only in Ashwigan but other around other schools of speeding mm -hmm. and um i'm all for uh putting in any 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 method to slow slow cars down, make them more aware that they're they're passing a school zone. Another option would be, which I think would be probably a little bit expensive, would be putting up those uh, those speed, uh, you know, those little speed monitors that tell them to slow down. But, uh, you know, I think that um, that might be cost prohibitive at now, right now, until you find the funding. But I, I'm, a, I'm in agreement that, uh, yeah, something should be done. Okay, thanks. I do appreciate your comments as well. Uh, Greg, uh, back over to you, uh, Melba or Sherilyn. Do you want to show yourself? Yes, it's nice to <clears throat> see uh, responsible uh, community members. And as we all know, we have great difficulties in our community. Um, we did have uh, school guards, as, as uh, a lot of people realize, right at the main intersection. And it was through the Homan School of Jameson. And I'm not sure if Audrey was there at the time, but those kind of things did happen. I think with the increase in the, our housing development, we have more children now. And I'm not sure, you know, um, uh, how the younger ones cross because in the morning, I don't see a lot crossing at the main intersection. So I'm not sure if younger ones also Cross, Sonny and Micah, where you're talking about. So we should certainly look at that, but I know there's responsible parents. You see a few walking their children through the main intersection. So I'm not sure if you need guards there as well as down a little bit further. Well, well Oh, sorry, I'll just look to uh, look to a response from Sonny, and I see Travis has his hand up for further input on this matter. So Sonny, and then over to Travis. Well, if you stand at that corner, 8 o'clock till 9, you're going to watch everybody try to beat that light. And I seen one day a, a Dodge truck with a trailer. You could hear it before I seen it to beat that light and he was flying and he's heading toward Jameson. There's a school up there. Doesn't he know there's a school there? No, how do you, how do you, what do you slow him down at? Do you do it in front of the school? Because say, they're beating that light. Even the school buses do it. And as in for as, and this one report that we got from the school, what happened, I talked to a few people around with these penguins I, I put at, and it's just not one person that's happened to. In the last five years, we've counted up at least 15 attempts to take our children. That's, that's, that's 15 too many. So how do we protect our children? Like, I, I brought up the idea of the concession stand. Be the perfect, kind of out of the way yet, but it's still a perfect spot because you got the baseball diamonds on one side, uh, the arena in front of you, splash pad and skate pad. You have everything around you. That would be the perfect place for the caretakers to have an office. So if anything goes on, they can go to it. And no matter if it's a woman or child or man, you're in trouble. The penguins there to help you. Because the reason why I would like that, because of what happened at the fair time. I don't know if you guys know, but what happened about one o'clock Saturday morning at the, on the fairgrounds? You guys know about that? There was, a, I, as has been put out, because I actually asked the cops that and they didn't want to, there was something that happened to a young woman at the fairgrounds, a fair time, Saturday, one o'clock in the morning. Like, where was the security for, for that, for all the rides? And but that stuff's got to stop. But how do we make it stop? I'm asking you guys for help. So none of our kids go get, go missing or none of them get killed. Because we live in a real cruel world now. And I think it's about time we start protecting our own people. Can you just mention why you have the penguins in the stores? Oh, well, the, while the penguins are in the stores is because if you see this penguin, it is a safe place for you to go. 
And I use, I use the penguin because it's a, uh, it's a tribute to my grandson. And when I was at the fair and I had the penguins around my booth, it actually worked because the kids looked at it and go, hey, look at the penguins, look at the penguins. They got their attention. As my uh, friend back here, Tracy's brought up goes, when you see the, the, the logo caretakers and the penguin, most kids from one to what? Grade three don't know how to read, but they'll know that penguin. So in these stores that in the village, and there's quite a few of them, that is for them to know that it's a safe place to go. But I got to get into the schools to let them know that. But I still got to jump through some more hoops to do it. But I, that, it is desperately needed because I, look, would you say that one day some, a woman got beat up and threw out of a moving van? And okay. Well, I, I totally uh, definitely uh, hear you. My, my thing is that. I don't want to, I don't want to, I guess, in a sense, either over, you know, we got, we got to make sure we have a, a concise plan of action. And I think that's where we need to phase in certain things. Cause when we talk about uh, the bigger picture, I mean, there's so many key stakeholders involved in this as well. We know, you know, supportive of what the police do further than that. I think your, your penguin initiative is, is a fantastic initiative. Uh, and I think it's about getting the, the word out of what that penguin represents and means for the communication on those pieces but i think again there's the anti-bullying task force uh there's there's just so many people who i think can have a more collaborative effort in order to continue to like you say protect our young people um and so i think this could be step one uh what we're dealing with the crosswalks with the speed bumps with the you know looking at uh, the monitors uh all those pieces i think those are the short term that can happen hopefully once we get word upon the funding uh to then see that happen i think we also need to have a conversation with our public works director in terms of the bigger picture plan of sidewalks to lights in the downtown core to the potential opportunity of the community safety fund with the security cameras at the uh whether that be at the throughout the trail at the main intersection uh because i, I someone I, someone mentioned i think melba you know our housing development is she's right the downtown core is more developed than it it, than it was 10 years ago uh you know so there you know there's ways uh that we have to with our our expansion and growth uh that we have to put in extra safety precautions and this is exactly the conversation that we're having so i'm just going to look to travis to further uh look to any final comments yes yeah 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 for uh, all the questions and uh i know one i want to address was uh for sure the jameson school they were kindergarten to grade uh, three, they are all bust. The, there's no walkers from Jameson. It is, uh, you know, we're looking at about 50% of the uh, pop student population from JC Hill are walkers. So uh, typically about 50, um, about 50 students, 50 to 70 students are walkers uh, after school and before school to, Jam uh, to JC Hill, but there is no walkers from Jameson. Uh, they're all bust. And uh, I guess yeah, one idea would also be to have police presence uh, during uh, the morning and afternoon. That could be something that we could talk to the police chief about, or uh, putting up the, the speed traps and catching those uh, speeders, speed um, people speeding in those school zones, and then and also the the at the schools to be a volunteer within the school, you actually have to have a vulnerable sector check. So those are some of the safety measures that we do have in that school, that, um, uh, for for reasons uh, that are needed. So it's a safety, uh, for safety reasons, it's a bomb of sector check. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks for that, Travis, as well. I'm gonna look yeah. to uh, to draw, and, and just one piece before I go over to, I believe Helen had her hand raised. Um, we also, one of our goals uh, in what we were trying to do in terms of our agendas as well, because this has been brought up, you know, from, I think the, uh, the last uh, situation that happened with the Martin young lady uh, who was attacked uh, by dogs, uh, that was, uh, you know, it, it started another conversation around community safety and protecting our young women specifically. Uh, and so I think that's uh, part of, you know, the what we're trying to do at the anti-bullying task force, what we're trying to do on the community safety, but we've put a community safety um, uh, place marker on our agendas. And maybe that's something where we can, we can maintain the caretakers to have uh, time under that place marker on agendas to see um, the progress that we're making and that we can gauge, um, you know, what we're saying and, and looking to, uh, you know, not just 
all talk, but looking at the action and what that looks like. So I think that's an important piece that maybe Maybe perhaps is an opportunity to further, um, you know, this conversation because it's not just we can't just have this all one and done in you know thirty five minutes. There's much more to di- have dialogue on, and there's much more uh, plans to to you know come into play. So I'm going to look to uh, Helen for final comments on this matter. Helen, you have the floor. Yeah, I just want to say I think it's all these different plans that's coming up are really good ideas. I, um, you know, I commend Sonny for starting his program with the penguins and making sure that your kids are safe. Um, school monitors. I used to be a school monitor back in the 80s. I used to monitor JC Hill School. And uh, so I, I know the, that's a good program because we really made sure that you know, it stopped a lot of things happening at the school when we monitor at the lunch hour and whatnot. So I just want to say, I'm just glad to hear all these new ideas because I know something has to happen. And I agree with the traffic like that, the speeding. Um, even past, uh, you go past uh, OM Smith School, and I don't see anybody going 40 miles an hour. So that really has to be dealt with as well, the issue about speeding around in schools. Totally, totally agree. And thanks, uh, thanks, Helen, uh, for your comments as well. Uh, sorry, Melba, did you have further? Yeah, just, just briefly. Um, as, as you know, possibly know that uh, Branford has patrols that are in, in, the, in the city and our police department are also planning the same thing as soon as funding becomes available. So that could be one of the one of the areas that the people on patrol could could assist with with the children's safety going to and from school and i'm sure darren can be the chief of police can be talked to about that thank you that's that's perfect and thanks again for uh, for advising on that piece uh, melba um and what a you know i think uh, oh sorry i think micah had her hand raised Okay, it's that you guys are unmuted. Just we unmuted. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to say a couple of things. Yeah, I think in the interim until crossing guards, the the police presence is a very good idea because I think so far that's the only thing that's proven to actually slow people down mm-hmm. um, is when they actually see police in the area. Uh, secondly, I just wanted to put it out there that so... Um, anybody that's like participating or helping with the caretakers organization here like is expected to have a vulnerable sectors check just to put it out there because <laughs> you know people always ask you when you're working with children yeah. so that's that's an expectation of uh, folks in the group um, also yeah and like so I know that it's been like highlighted but I think in the long term safety around all the schools on Six Nations is a priority for this group. And then like further on, like in steps going out for it, it's just general safety, like for women and like other vulnerable people is like also like a larger, more long-term goal. But um, I mean, we're, I guess we're not really here to talk about that, but just like, just to give more sort of information and context to some of the avenues and things that the group itself is sort of looking forward to addressing. Oh, that, that's 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 fantastic, uh, uh, Monica. And I think that's where maybe perhaps again, it's not just this. This is just the beginning, you know, of of I think much more to come when we all can collaborate. Uh, you know, that's the whole beauty of I think common goals. We all we all can agree upon community safety. What that looks like, I think, all needs to have a collaborative effort. And so, uh, do appreciate uh, your intentions, your goals behind SN uh, Six Nations uh, caretakers. Uh, I know you'd mentioned as well, uh, you know, the the old concession booth, and I think that's something that maybe even council could further discuss on that matter to have uh, like an HQ per se. Um, but again, I think this is where we need to start to have these conversations. We got to start to, you know, put these plans and ideas and initiatives in place. 
uh, and to be able to support each other while doing that. And so I do agree with you as well in terms of the interim solution. So we can definitely have that conversation uh, with our Six Nations police chief uh, to, again, uh, they, that they're always met with challenges as well. As you know, police are underfunded. And, and to Melba's point, we're looking at uh, new funding sources and streams uh, uh, to, the, to do those types of initiatives and to have more uh, police presence within community and so forth. So we'll definitely have those conversations in addition uh, to the follow-up pieces in which the which the motion is, is laid out uh, in follow-up to uh, the funding sources to get uh, the, uh, the crosswalks, the monitors and all those pieces uh, started right away. And then furthermore, uh, have uh, used back into council uh, on where we could look on the bigger picture of development of community safety in general. So I really do appreciate each of you coming to council uh, and really again bringing this item forward uh, the passion is very very uh, clear uh, it's to me it's a it's a breath of fresh air to know that we have all of our members coming together to protect all of our kids all of our young people our women and so forth our elderly the list goes on uh, and so I think it's a it's a it's a nice uh, it's really a nice time to be able to discuss this matter but I want to start to develop plans of action and that that we have, you know, the main collaborators, uh, collaborators at the table. Uh, so that being said, uh, the motion has been moved by Councillor Michelle and seconded by Councillor Audrey. I'm just going to go to final question from Sunny or comment, uh, and then we'll go to the vote on the motion. Sunny, you have well, the floor. Well, we're going to get back to the crosswalks. Are you guys going to put up a crosswalk sign like you do in front of the plaza? Well, you can push a button for these kids. Push the button to cross. Push the button to cross. Is that yes. going to be part of that too? And how about big signs it's a little dinky saying saying school zone so i'm 100. still looking still looking on, on the territory where it says uh that school zone speed limit is 60 miles an hour i have yet to find that sign <laughs> i'm looking for it because that's a, that's as fast as you're pretty much going yeah can make bigger I, signs so they can see that maybe perhaps sunny what we can do is uh looking when we have our meeting our planning session with our director of public works maybe the you use our invited maybe that's an opportunity for use to bring your ideas forward so that we can be able to have uh, bigger signs looking at the interim of the the lights and the button and the, so forth so maybe what i'll do sunny and micah is extend the invitation when that meeting is set uh, and then we can have this further uh, idea and turned it into a plan and one last thing sure. chuck that damn tree down in front of the school so sign nobody can see it there's a sign that says jc hill but a tree's in the way and you go the other way the fence line is all covered with, I don't know, vines. You cannot see that sign. Cut that tree down so the people can see it or move the sign. That, that's what I would like to see happen right away because, like I said, if you grew up down here, you, you know that school safe. Yeah, definitely. So again, you have great ideas. And so uh, I can definitely uh, uh, pass that along as well in terms of the short term solutions and to look to possibly what's the best uh, route to take, whether that be moving that sign or so forth. So there's a lot of things I think on our action plan uh, and that we could take right away. Uh, so it would just allow us some time to do that work. Uh, and then in the meantime, I'll also look to set that meeting up with our director of public works and extend an invite to yourself, uh, just so that we can have a more fulsome conversation uh, in terms of the ideas. I'm going to go to the vote now, Council, as we do have another delegation, uh, and we are on a tight time frame as well this evening. Uh, but again, uh, don't want to eliminate the fact of the importance of uh, your issue being brought forward. So with that being said, again, want to say now to both you, Sunny uh, and Micah, and the caretakers, uh, and we'll look to further collaboration uh, in the coming days and weeks uh, and see what we can come up with even further. With that being said, uh, it's been moved and seconded all in favor. Any opposed? A seeing or hearing none motion is carried. A motion to waive second reading. Moved. Moved by Michelle, second by Audrey. All in favor of second reading. Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none motion is carried. Okay, Sunny and Micah, again, Nyawa to both of you for coming in uh, and, uh, and leading this uh, and look forward to working with you both on the next steps. Have a, have a great evening. Okay, Council, I'm going to continue to move right along here. Brooke, if you could please confirm if Peter, Peter Smith from the Canadian Centre of Rural Creativity is on the line. Yes, he is. Okay, sorry, I do. I'm working for my phone, so I'm 
having some difficulties there. Good evening and welcome to General Counsel, uh, Peter. Uh, you do, just, uh, just FYI, we are on a tight time frame, as you've probably noticed our previous delegation. Uh, so I will look uh, to you to, if you can, shorten up your presentation. We do have a recommendation in front of us, uh, which is an application of permission to record a 45 minute play within our territory. So with that being said, I wanna welcome you, Zainala, for joining us and I'll pass the floor right over to yourself. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, thank you all for uh, giving me a bit of your time um, uh, tonight to talk to you a very little bit about the Community Play Project that we've been working on for the last few months. So the proposal before you, oh, my name is Pete Smith, and I'm the Executive and Creative Director for the Canadian Centre for Rural Creativity. We're located over in Blythe, which is a village of about a thousand people over near Lake Huron, and we involve in a lot of different creative projects, and this is one of them. So. What the proposal is before you is part of a greater project, but I'll focus on the proposal and, uh, and where we're at right now. And then if we have enough time, I'll talk a little bit about the community play and how that will work over the next few years. And any time for question and answers, uh, I'm certainly open to that. You can also reach me by email or if you want to get in touch with me by phone, I'm always open to talk about this stuff. So uh, the proposal uh, is that on November the 12th and 13th, which is a Saturday and Sunday, we do a walkabout in uh, Chiefswood Park. So I've been working with some folks from Six Nations, uh, Jackie Jameson at uh, Six Nations Tourism, um, also Tannis Hill and Heather um, um, over at uh, Six Nations Polytechnic, and Ellie Joseph with the Two Row Wampum. And I went on the Two Row Wampum this summer, and it was an extraordinary experience. And a lot of these ideas that are coming forward um, were experienced during the paddle of of the Grand River. So on the uh, Saturday, on the 12th, what we'd like to do is start with a, a Thanksgiving and reached out to Joe Martin and also uh, we'll be reaching out to Ron Thomas if he can't do it. Um, and recently I did a conference in Brussels and Ron came up and, uh, and gave a Thanksgiving address in the opening keynote and it was very powerful. And uh, so anyway, we will be starting that way. And then we'll do a walk through the naturalized grass at Chiefswood over towards the Pauline Johnson uh, Museum and where she lived. And right now working to get an indigenous actress to read or recite a couple of Pauline Johnson's poems at that location. We'll be outside throughout the whole uh, experience there. Then uh, we'll head down the road nearby the house, heading towards the Grand River, taking in the evening and taking in the smells and the sounds. And we're looking into uh, having a singer or singers sing the water song in another part of the park and then moving toward that and then experiencing that. And then uh, Ellie and Jay Bailey from the two row will come paddling by um, on the Grand River. Now it's November, so we have to be aware and cognizant of the, of the weather. But uh, to me, there's really no bad weather. There's just bad clothing choices. Anyway, they will row by into, then they'll turn back around and come, come on to the landing. Then uh, we're going to a fire and we'll have a story told by one of the Six Nations storytellers. Uh, could be a legend, could be something contemporary. And then over to the pavilion where Ellie and Jay will talk about the two row wampum and the story of that. Then we'll move up the hill to the uh, tourism office and we'll head inside and there'll be a little bite to eat. And we're working with a technology company called XR and so Jackie has also worked with them and they're developing an art installation that is going to be a six foot by six foot dragonfly. And what will happen on the dragonfly will have two screens and there will be a series of uh, sounds, songs, stories, images by people interacting, they just press these buttons and up will come these uh, minute, minute and a half long experiences of and on the Grand River. Um, then we'll have a conversation about the Grand River um, Community Play Project. And after that, we'll give thanks, wish everyone on a safe trip home. And that will happen on, well, ideally on the 12th and on the 13th. We'll start about dusk and we'll go for about an hour and a half or two hours. We're anticipating about 25 or 30 people coming. This is more of a teaser or a setup for the greater project, which as I said at the beginning, will be spread over the next couple of years, leading to an experience that will run the length of the river in the summer of 2024. So it includes uh, folks from different communities up and down the river. 
And I've been involved in two other community play projects, and they are transformative experiences. And the first one I did was in 1990 over at the Blythe Festival when I was the artistic director there. And it started off with a small group of people, probably four or five, and we just started talking, telling each other stories. And by the end, there were about 350 people involved in this project. And each night we would, as we presented it, two years after we started these kitchen table conversations, conversations in backyards, around fires, we would walk through the village and four or 500 people would follow the parade. And there were scenes on rooftops and in trees and on the sides of the road. And we went down to the edge of the town to the rutabaga plant where it was usually filled with rutabagas. But for this particular two week period, there were no rutabagas and we built stages and there was music and stories that were told. And it was a celebration of community. It was a bringing together of people that either hadn't been together in many, many years or had never been together. So the Community Play Project is an opportunity to bring people together in celebration, in story. So the second one I did was up on up in the Arctic on Resolute Bay, uh, in Resolute Bay, and it was um, uh, done in Anuktitut in English. And that was another extraordinary experience. The community came together. They told the stories from five-year-olds to elders and everyone in between. And the stories, some of them hadn't been heard in a long, long time. So the Community Play Project is an inclusive, interdisciplinary um, uh, experience. It brings people together, as I said. It could be done in dance. It could be done in, in uh, music. It could be done in storytelling, in theater. Um, there's many different ways to do it. But this particular project will run, as I'm imagining it now, the length of the river. But the teaser begins with the first step, which is the proposal before you tonight, which is to start in Chiefswood Park. And really, that is the beginning of where we, we want to get to. Um, I want to end with a, with a quote, because I've worked in story all my life, in TV, film, theater. It is, it is my experience that stories can transform, can change, can teach. And this is a quote by someone named Gary Paul Nabum. To restore any place, we must also begin to restory it, to make it the lesson of our legends, festivals, and seasonal rites. Story is the way we encode deep-seated values within our culture. Ritual is the way we enact them. We must ritually plant the cottonwood and willow poles in winter in order to share the sounds of the vermilion flycatcher during the rites of spring. By replenishing the land with our stories, we let the wild voices around us guide the restoration we do. The stories will always outlast us. I believe that. And I also think the Community Play Project is something that can do that, having been through two before. So with respect, um, I, 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 we put the proposal together. It is working with partners in Six Nations. There, this is uh, done respectfully. Um, we are finding our way in art as in creativity. You walk into the darkness, uh, you bring light with you, and you, then you find the stories that are there. So in the exploration thus far with the folks that I've met at Six Nations, there has been an enthusiastic response, but I think right and properly I'm before you today asking um, for your blessing, for your permission to do this teaser on November 12th and 13th. I will tell you that also on November 19th and 20th, we're doing something else with another dragonfly in Kitchener. We're doing the structure of the play at the moment we're looking at the two ray, the two row structure. So the indigenous line of stories and the ally line of stories. And then the third piece is, is the water between. And something that we've been talking about creatively is the voice of the river and, and, and how to present that in this melange, in this soup of story from Dundalk to Lake Erie. So that's my proposal to you. Uh, I'm certainly open to answer any questions. And as I say, if you want to talk offline or anything like that, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm more than open. I, as I, I'm passionate about stories and I know what can happen with a community play. And it, it's transformed me and my experience and my understanding of story as well. So with respect and thanks, that's, uh, that's my, my proposal. 
Okay, thank you, Niall, uh, so much, uh, Peter, for uh, for walking us through uh, your plans. Uh, again, uh, just really quickly, I'll open the floor up uh, for any further questions or comments for Peter. Uh, but just to, just to start, uh, Peter, I, again, again, it sounds uh, like you've already connected with some great people within our community. I know Ellie Joseph has done a huge amount of work with uh, multiple partners with Two Row on the Grand. Uh, and the importance of what the Two Row on the Grand means uh, in which is really even shedding light even further to uh, our land claims, uh, which is again of the Haldeman Tract, uh, you know, the six miles on each side of the river. So there's a lot that is into, um, into when it comes into play when when it when we talk about the two row on the Grand and we just talk about the two row wampum in general. Uh, and so it's nice to hear how uh, you're getting creative in that way. And uh, you, one of the key words there, key phrase that you had mentioned in relation to, you know, um, giving the the river the, the hearing the voice of the river, uh, the water. I think that that stood out to me uh, the most in terms of, uh, you know, what does that mean and what does that look like? As you know, even with water issues across the territory, uh, not on just Six Nations, but within this country, when it comes to uh, First Nations communities and re really the la lack of. Uh, access to clean drinking water and so forth and the challenges we have uh, on that front. Uh, so there's there's many ways I think that these types of plays and, and types of creativity can really help us in sharing our message across the board when it comes to uh, these types of, um, you know, these types of initiatives. And I think it's important, uh, you know, to highlight these because I mean, at the end of the day, it's about education. Uh, it's about educating, you know, our allies, our, our non-Indigenous uh, population, uh, into what the realities are within our territory and what our people face on a daily basis uh, and the importance really of the Grand River and what that Grand River signifies and means uh, to our people. So I think, uh, you know, to me, it's, it's it sounds great. It sounds like you're connected with some great people within the territory and community. Uh, would love to see and hear more if, uh, again, Council agrees to the motion this evening of approval. Uh, but at this point in time, we'll look to open the floor up for any further questions or comments. Thank you, Mark. Please bear with me. I'm working off my phone here. Uh, Councillor Greg. Oh, sorry, you're on mute. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. hi, uh, Peter. Uh, it's an uh, interesting, uh, interesting subject, and uh, it looked like it'd be quite, uh, uh, quite a little uh, quip uh, story. But my, my concern was, and I think the chief uh, addressed it, I guess you had good resource material for um, a, a resource person to, uh, to consult with, uh, just to make sure that, you know, our cultural values are presented in the, in the right way. Uh, the other was, um, like, I live, on, I live on a river there, not far from where you're going to shoot. I says it's uh, you better have your long johns on in November if you're going to be on that water. So I can say, but other than that, it uh, it sounds like an interesting project. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, yes, and cultural values, uh, and I'm learning. Um, I'm the first to tell you that it is a learning process that I'm I'm very much into. Um, and what I've been reading in the last year or so, um, John Mohawk and uh, uh, Shenandoah, uh, Noah Shenandoah, lots of Lots of wisdom there, uh, so yes, um, I will. That's definitely on our minds. And Long John's in November is also a good idea. Do appreciate that. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Peter. It's really I and mean, good comments, uh, Greg. Really, it's uh, it's that uh, it's that re really respect, right? And and knowing that we have the proper information and how it's it's conveyed. Uh, I see Councillor Michelle has her hand raised. Thank you, and thanks, Peter. Nice to see you again. Peter originally came to Ethics, so. Um, I'm going to move this recommendation, and I, I really, I like the art. I think it, it will um, share our knowledge. That's fantastic. Thank you, uh, Michelle. So we, we have a motion on the floor. It's moved by Michelle. Is there a seconder? Second by Audrey. Is that correct, Audrey? Yeah, I can second, but I have a question also. Okay, sure. Go Peter, that was good. Uh, are, you, are we able to uh, su suggest some names for you for the people that you're looking for? Please, please, yes. The way that the community play works is it's a chain and people introduce people to people and then you end up being with those people, getting to know them. So 
Um, yeah, that's exactly the way it works. So please do. Yeah. Well, one I'd like to suggest to you is Sherry Miracle. Uh, she is an actor. She is a singer, and she has already learned uh, Pauline Johnson's poems and recites them in full regalia. Oh my! Thank you. Yeah, I uh, I will reach out to Sherry. Um, uh, I know Merrick. I know some Miracle actors actually in different parts of the country. That name is uh, familiar to me, but. Uh, Sherry, okay, great. If uh, you have the email, just send it along. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. I'll try and find it. Thank you. Okay. Yep. That's fantastic. Thanks for that, Audrey. So it's been moved and seconded. Again, uh, the recommendation that reads Six Nations of the Grand Reelected Council approved Peter Smith's application and permission to record the 45 minute play uh, within the Six Nations of the Grand River Territory. So, any further questions or comments? Okay, seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing on motion is carried. Motion to waive second reading. I move. Moved by Michelle, second by Audrey to waive second reading. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. And just uh, thank you again, Yawa, uh, Peter, for joining us this evening. And just a little FYI. Uh, I know tomorrow there's a premiere of, uh, I don't know if there's any, any interest to you, but our, our local individuals of the Snipe where they do ghost, it's actually appearing and premiering on APTN tomorrow of the Pauline Johnson estate. Hey. Uh, so that starts at seven o'clock if you're interested <laughs> to join in there and uh, maybe do a little bit more even further. Awesome. <laughs> just, thought, just thought I'd mention that. That's awesome. Okay, thank well, you thank very you. much. Thanks, Peter. Have a great evening. Thank you for joining us. You too. Thank you. Okay, Council, I'm going to continue moving right along here. Uh, adoption of the General Council Minutes of October 11th. Move the minutes. Moved by Nathan, seconder. Second by Greg. Further questions, comments? Okay, seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing on motion is carried. Number six, one, signing out of the Queen and Silver Bells. As we all know, this was uh, through an email ratific uh, ratification needed to further happen. And as we know, this was uh, yesterday, two days ago. Uh, so it's a, a post. So this is just ratifying the email as it states within the recommendation. Is there a mover or a seconder to that effect? I'm on. Moved by uh, Helen, seconded by Michelle. Sorry, Michelle, did I hear you? Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, sorry, Michelle. <laughs> Moved by Helen and seconded by Michelle uh, on the recommendation uh, six one in relation to the Queen and Silver Bells. Are there any further questions or comments? Seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Mm -hmm. Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Uh, considering that's a post approval, we don't have to do the second reading wave. So 6 2 is null. Uh, moving into recommendations from the Ethics Committee, uh, there'll probably be some questions. Maybe if I could ask Nathan to speak to recommendation 7 1. Yeah, thanks, Chief. So this was a um, looking for a recommendation to approve the publishing of a journal of articles. Um, remind me, though, Michelle, didn't we ask for the presentation to come to council before it was published? That's my understanding, because there is some confusion. There's so much being done on the water. Not sure which one this was um, directed at. Yeah, so Chief, I think this one was supposed to come back with the presenters to present the findings, very similar to the last one. Okay. Um, before we go to publishing. So a little bit more work has to do on this one and we need to get the, the individuals to come back and present. Okay, so that would be, is that the, that's the Makasha looking horse with the Onegenos? Is that correct? Or is that yeah. Dr. Don, Dr. Don Martin Hill and all the that crew, correct? It's, that's where it's confusing. Okay. So maybe, maybe what we can do, uh, if it's okay with you, Nathan, is if we can maybe do a little bit more of that due diligence work, and then we'll bring this item back to full council for further discussion. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Is there any opposition from council to defer item 7-1 until we do our due diligence work? Question, it's, very similar. it's very similar to number 7-2 as well. The recommendation okay. wasn't supposed to come to council. It was, it was supposed to do 
go back to the I, presenters and present their findings to council. Okay, I understand what you're saying now. Thanks for that. So we may have to do that with 7-1 and 7-2. I see Helen has her hand raised. Yeah, I'm not opposing. It's just that I, I think I'm raising a question of, we have so many people coming, I want to do water. Yeah. And I question the level of their expertise because they come and present, like Nathan said, they're going to present the findings to the community. So I'm starting to question the level of these their expertise to be doing water studies hmm. and, and then reporting to the community because community hear things and they get kind of upset. And, um, yeah. I just question that. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good good uh, good uh, point to raise, Helen, and I think that's even part of the even for the, the the due diligence that we have to do. But I think just also in in relation to the topic on water, I think it'd be nice to maybe go back and uh, go back to our archives to see what's been done thus far, because like I said, even today we're happening. Uh, what we were just talking in relation to the um, to the water legislation. The Clean uh, Drinking Water Legislation Act. Or the, um, there's just so many things happening across the board with water. So I think maybe uh, what we can do as well um, is um, uh, is look to kind of bring those all together, uh, and not just this particular um, project or initiative, but looking across the board. Uh, Greg, uh, just to go uh, further on Helen's point. Um, Usually, if that's why I was asking on the last study about well, you know, where it's going to be published, if it's going to be published, and what journals uh, or what journal it would be published in. Because if you're going to publish a, a paper or any type of scientific uh, research, it, it goes through a very rigorous process. And, um, and these people that do the research and do the writing, they have to follow specific, uh, pretty fairly high standard guidelines to get it published. And when they, when they realize they have to do that, then their, their research is usually pretty good. Totally, uh, totally agree. And thanks for, for those comments as well, uh, Greg. So what I'm going to do and suggest at this point in time, and I know I'll work with uh, our administrative team as well to kind of collect the findings and reach out to these indiv individuals. Um, and then we'll bring these items back at our next council meeting or once all that work is complete. Uh, further question, comment, Nathan? Yeah, really quickly, I just want to follow up on your point, Chief, as well as Helen and Greg's on the kind of um, telling that story of, of the research that's been done, because Helen's right, there's been so much done on, on water, right? All of these studies that have been done on water over the years. And I think at ethics, we talked about a long-term strategy to bring in... Um, a resource like a human resource uh, staff person to uh, begin kind of looking at it and tracking all of this research, just so that we also know at ethics, whether or not a, a particular water research may have already been done. Um, so so I, I know that's a bit more long-term or, or maybe Darren's got a little bit more of a, a different vision on that, but that's something uh, we talked about at ethics um, uh, to, to kind of help coordinate those aspects too. Makes, makes total sense. I'll look to Darren as well if he has further input on this. Uh, yeah, thanks. I mean, it, it's very consistent in terms of uh, the Zach, Zach Miller's role in terms of the director for planning, performance, and evaluation. He's been looking more internal in terms of data that's being generated through departments and outcomes related to that. But he has also been tasked with looking at those studies. So I think there's a there's an opportunity here to like you say, uh, inventory them, number one, I think actually develop a timeline by sector, whether it's water, whether it's, you know, other aspects of environment. It typically, they center around that and culture. It's sort of like those maybe three or four prongs and they actually will line up with our community plan quite well as well. So that's would be the way that we would categorize a lot of the studies and understand them, uh, their relevance. And I think too, with water, it gets such a hot topic these days that you know, a lot of people are looking at it from different approaches and really seeing the impacts of water and having healthy water on our on our, our population and our quality of life. So all of these are like measurements to help inform what does quality of life mean for Six Nations people. So that's kind of our, our vision for that. Um, but I can certainly uh, see whether he's been able to, to start to do that work and we can we can integrate that with ethics uh, going forward. 
That's great. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Darren, for your for your comments. And I think uh, you know, do uh, appreciate your 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 direction that you're hitting in, in this uh, manner. Okay, Council. So what uh, what I'm hearing then for now is what we'll do. Uh, I've asked Brooke to reach back out to each of these uh, individuals in relation to seven one and seven two from ethics, uh, just to do a little bit more of that due diligence stuff, uh, rather than do the due diligence work, uh, and then we'll bring this item back to full council with our presenters included. Uh, further question, comment, Audrey. Yeah, I'd like to know we we're doing the big uh, plan on this, on the water. So people are saying that this is happening upstream from us. So we have to have an upstream plan on how to work with the municipalities to stop dumping so much um, debris and poisons, toxins, et cetera, into the river. And they have to have a better uh, purification system as all the way up so that it helps take all the stuff out before it gets down here to Six Nations. And we have to do the same thing for our friends downriver. Right. Yeah, that's, I think, a good, another good point. Thanks for that, Audrey. We'll definitely uh, note those. Uh, okay, Council, I'm going to continue moving uh, right along here, and I, I do apologize if it seems as I'm rushing. Uh, we are on a tight uh, time frame this evening, um, so I'm, I'm going to continue moving along. We're going to go to scheduling at this point, uh, looking to see uh, who will be attending uh, with myself uh, to the AFN uh, Chiefs Assembly. Uh, which is on December 6th through the 8th uh, in Ottawa uh, this year. So looking to uh, add uh, one or two names, three if need be, whatever that looks like, looking for interest from council. Is anyone interested in coming and going? I would love to go, Mark. I'm going um, to be going to uh, uh, kind of an operation on um, the 2nd. So otherwise I would go, I would love to go, but I can't. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks for that, Helen. Uh, sorry, Sherry Lynn or Melba. Go ahead, Melba. Oh, in the past, we sort of looked at the agenda. Not all the time, but we did. What is relevant to who, who goes? Is there more information on, uh, yeah. on yeah, water? Sure, if, I could. If, if it could pertain to Nathan, for example, and what they're dealing with or ethics or health. I wonder if we could look at the agenda before uh, choosing who's going. Sure. Uh, that's no, yeah, sure. Okay. That's no problem. Uh, um, maybe if I can just really quickly, if I can check in Tammy. Uh, Tammy, are you able just to pull up a quick glimpse? I can look, but normally what they do is they'll send out the notice first, and that's what we received so far. I don't believe they've confirmed the full agenda yet. But as soon as we do, we can we can pull it uh, forward for council. I guess right now well, we just want to be able to I guess get get permission to to book the rooms and start those travel and registrations right now. So we can hold a couple of rooms and and then easily release them after after we know who's going to go or not go. So that's what we'll do. Okay, uh, thanks for that, uh, Tammy uh, Audrey. Yeah, is it virtual as well or just in person only? Uh, I believe it's virtual as well. Tammy, can you confirm or correct me if I'm wrong? Yeah, they have been. Uh, I think that's going to be the, the new normal now. So there will be virtual it's, available. Yeah, it's uh, there's it's considered hybrid model, Audrey. Yes, I'm aware of that, Mark. So if there's anything on education, I would like to uh, attend that one one portion of it yeah sure makes sense okay so what we'll do then uh council is maybe just at this time uh just if we can look to the recommendation or if there's an opportunity uh, for mover and seconder for myself and just have two counselors and for the names to be confirmed uh at a later date if that's okay is our mover and seconder to that effect obviously you're more than welcome to join virtually to audrey's point as well uh, moved by sherry lynn seconder Second by Nathan. Uh, all in favor? Any opposed? Uh, seeing or hearing the motion is carried. Uh, recommendation 8 2. Uh, this is, uh, as we know, uh, we've already completed our Remembrance Day uh, ceremony with our Six Nations veterans, which was a beautiful ceremony as per usual. 
Um, this one is in relation to Hamilton's Remembrance Day service to lay our wreath at their ceremony, which is happening Friday, November 11th at the Gore Park, uh, which begins at 1045. I believe I'm scheduled in Brantford that same day, that same time, which is why I put this on the uh, scheduling. So I will look for uh, a designate to attend uh, that. Looking to anyone who's interested or available. Just attending, not speaking? Just to lay the wreath. I can really yeah, I, I went last year and that's all you do. Okay, perfect. Really so if I can have a motion for Councillor Nathan Wright to attend um, uh, the Remembrance Day uh, wreath. Moved uh, by Audrey, second by Sherry Lynn. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing that motion is carried. It's crazy now we're getting into the scheduling with everything kind of post COVID. Uh, 8-3 Council, this is in relation to uh, the three month update, uh, which is happening from the uh, Independent Special Interlocutors Office um, that's going to be witnessed uh, at the Mohawk Institute on November 10th. I will uh, be there already. Um, I will be going on as well a tour with the Minister uh, Lametti, uh, who will be down uh, in our community on this day but looking just again uh, to have any council members who are available uh, to attend uh, this three month update in the witnessing of the work thus far of the special interlocutors office. As you know, I also attended uh, um, in Edmonton to speak at the first gathering uh, and that went quite well. There's, there's a lot of things happening. There's a lot of recommendations. And so we're looking at ways uh, to look at our input as well uh, to some of the uh, work that's happening within uh, the searches of the residential schools. Uh, Sherry Lynn. What time does that start, Chief? Uh, there's, it's a two-pronged. Tammy, can you confirm the time? And I know first it's just a private tour and then the opening uh, of the actual ceremony or the event. Tammy? Yeah, it does start mid-morning. So I believe 10 o'clock is when they want to just, just get things started officially. So 10 a.m.? Yes. Okay, so thanks. And it, we don't necessarily have to put names to this, but I, I liked how the recommendation is written in, really, in relation to anyone who's available, any council member who wishes to attend, uh, just looking to a mover and seconder. Uh, moved by Sherry Lynn, seconder. Thank you. Second, second by uh, Michelle. Further questions, comments? Chief, All in favor? I Add, could I could I just add they, they did kind of want to have a guesstimation of numbers so if you are interested please let Brooke know so that way we can kind of give them some numbers by November 1st. Perfect thank you for that uh, Tammy. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing on motion is carried. Uh, the last uh, item under scheduling uh, is in relation. So I had uh, this is a, again I think all falls in line as another key stakeholder, key stakeholder from our earlier discussion with uh, Sunny and Micah around violence. Uh, this is uh, happening uh, hosted by Gunakrishra. Um, and I had originally accepted the invitation. However, I'm now unable to attend that event, but again, uh, want to still have representation from our council uh, to attend this event and, and give uh, some words on behalf of our council. Um, again, it's really important to me, very passionate about this. I know all of us. Uh, so looking to see if anyone is interested to fill my spot in, that, uh, in this event. Uh, Melba? I can do that, uh, Mark. Okay, that's fantastic. Thank you so much, Melba. Is there a motion, a mover and seconder to that effect for Melba to attend in my spot? Moved by Helen, seconded by Audrey. Further questions, comments? And Melba, uh, Tammy, uh, will uh, reach out to you directly and give you all the details. Uh, I believe Chastity uh, Martin is the main contact. Okay, seeing or hearing no further questions or comments, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Motion to waive second reading on all the previous motions in relation to scheduling. Is there a mover and seconder to a waiving second reading? Moved by Greg, seconder. Second by Audrey. All in favor? Any opposed? 
seeing or hearing none motion is carried so to, again just uh if you can for those of you who are interested and available for the three months update at the mohawk institute uh, if you could get those names into brook as soon as possible uh that does uh, lead me into the adjournment of our open session i will at this point look to a mover and seconder to adjourn moved by sherry lynn seconder Second by Greg, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Thank you to those uh, who joined us for this evening's general council. I know we did have some issues with our live streaming, so uh, we will look to, uh, again, the recording and posting that. Have, excuse me, have a great evening. Oh.